hello guys and welcome back to another video so in the previous video we have seen how you can create a simple profile page using the concepts of component in react so uh, extending the idea of react furthermore uh, in this video we are going to be seeing how you can create a simple to-do list app with react and uh, uh, using the idea of local storage from the browser to maintain a persistent state of the task which is uh, provided by the user so even when you refresh the entire page the uh, task will be still there so i'll just uh, walk you through the entire process how you can create from start to end and uh, just stay okay so uh, as you have seen in the previous video uh, the process of installing so the process of initially uh, getting off with react is uh, create a simple folder you can uh, use idf your choice basically over here i'm using vs code so vs code is something more preferable and uh, this is what i like so i use that it's up to you you can use yours and uh, you can just uh, create an empty folder and within that empty folder you can open uh, terminal when uh, open terminal within the vs code over here like this and uh, just to be within that folders okay so you can type npx create create react app and the uh, Just hit enter and the basic dependencies will be installed. So this is the command to go and uh, initiate with React app. So this will be the dependencies that will be installed in the empty folder. And uh, from there onwards, you can create your own component and uh, get away with it. So this is the source folder. Create and create a folder within source components. And within the component you can uh, create your own components and CSS file and etc uh, like I've shown you in the previous video so this is the CSS folder even over here I have, I have a singular single uh, CSS file which can be used for the all components within the page and uh, I have a single uh, JS app uh, uh, which is used as a component to do so the main logic of the entire app it is in a single component so this is the component once again the code will be available in the description do check and fork the repo for more information and some uh, tweaks of your choice and you can improve the code for sure and uh, I just have one single component over here so beginning with uh, this the component can be either of a functional component or a class component so over here this is a class component and uh, similarly you can uh, import the CSS file like this so within the class component you have a constructor uh, which holds some state so this is the state this initially within that state over here you are having an empty list so initially it is empty and uh, what is this so basically this dot input is equal to react dot create ref this specific statement is referred to the input field through which the user is going to enter the task so this dot input is referred over here so this is how you can directly refer to that specific element in the component for example over here the element is input okay so 
this is how you initiate a state you always write a state within a class constructor so when you're using a class component these are the steps this is very necessary if you just type in some anything it will not come this is and uh, this is very important this dot state so you can only use states in class component when it comes to the vanilla react you can't use a class or states in functional component for that you have a more advanced concept called redux so we'll get over there someday but uh, for now we'll just stick to vanilla yeah so this is our state for the entire app this is our input field for a reference to the input field and uh, this is our function for adding task and rendering into the page so i'll just maximize this so over here i have created an created an object and within that object you have id value and date so this dot input dot current dot value so what this does is that it will fetch the value from the input field that is the current dot value and store it into value so whenever a user enters a specific task there is an object created and appended or pushed within that empty list basically this is the process initially it will look for a list if it's null it will perform this and else this so over here we are also using the concept of local storage for persistence state for example if you refresh the entire page and you want to see the task it will be still there if you don't use local storage then it will not be there you can use a database or something like that but for just uh, a overview of how you can do that you can use local storage so this entire object is been pushed into the list called items so this is the process and uh, uid is basically whenever you render a specific list or something like that you need to specify that list tag with a unique id so every list should be unique so this is the function for adding task and at the end we are setting a state with the stored list within the local storage so this is how you can do that you can use the sets, um, set state uh, method in react to set a state of that empty list so this is the approach and uh, component dead mount so this is not a function basically it is a uh, life cycle method so i'll just put some uh, good references to how react works in terms of life cycle there are multiple life cycles like uh, render uh, component it mount will mount will update will receive props etc so the uh, docs will be available in the description so do check what is the purpose of it mount basically uh, it runs after render so whenever the component is rendered after that you can use component did mount to get some data basically it is used for an axios call or an http request to get some data for a get request so i'm using it for basically fetching data from the local storage and uh, re-rendering the entire page on refresh so the main purpose of using component did mount is for uh, the refresh state so whenever you refresh it the component uh, renders and after that render the component did mount will be called which 
performs a get uh, item from the local storage and it will re-render the entire list in the same format as it is. So this is the code for it. I'll just put some good resources for the uh, lifecycle procedures within React. So please do give it a look. It will be better. And this is the procedure for delete. So with each task, I have uh, given a button which will act as a index finder within that array. So what it will do is that it will use the splice and the argument index and one and it will determine the position of that specific task within that array and with that uh, index value it will try to determine what is the position of that index and it will delete that element from that array based on its index number and now yes delete it so it's not like you can only delete from the start or the end you can delete even from the middle so this is what the delete basically does and even after delete it re-renders so you need to perform this and the uh, update was not necessary right now so and this is our render procedure so this is our render so component did mount basically runs after render so the purpose of component did mount is basically for an uh, http request i'll just show you those type of uh, procedures in the further video so how you can create a post request to get request with the help of uh, lifecycle procedures in react so stay tuned for those kind of videos and uh, yeah this is the render method basically it is an entire div within that div you have an h1 tag with the separation within that you have another container within that you have a input field with a ref and a button for add task and uh, within that you have an order list and within that order list ordered list you have a gsx so this curly braces is called gsx so this dot state dot map so state list is a array so you can map you can iterate over the elements within a list using map with item and index and return a list so basically this is an id an item value will be your task and within that list you have a button so the on click even for button as i've shown you above this is what it does basically so this was the entire to do app and uh, single component which is used over here like this and yeah that was it so i'll just show the output as you might know the command npm start It will definitely take some time. I don't know why it does, does it take so much time, but uh, okay, it was good. Okay, so this is our app. And uh, initially there is, is no task. So I'll just show the local storage and how the object is created. So press F12. And uh, minimize this application. Local storage. This is where you can find local storage within applications, local storage. And uh, yeah, you can see the local storage works in terms of keys and values or values in array. And the key is a list. Initially it is empty, right? You can't see anything. So let me just type in something. 
how enter you can see an entire object is created right like i've shown you the object over here is this date id and value so our object in terms of that is this so this entire object with the input task is been appended to the local storage so this was the id and the date time and the task name now let's add by so as you can see another object was appended right within that same array now let's see toy movies summer winter don't mind that so this are list of task and initially our object sorry and the array was empty and within that uh, array you have an basically it is known as a array of objects so these are objects with some unique identification that is id and stuff like that you have y value and uh, date so this is how you can use local storage so you can also delete this so as you can see it goes to that specific task and deletes it it doesn't uh, deletes it from the front or the end of an array but it goes to it so typing in some random task i so now deleting winter so as you can see winter is the first index right delete so it's gone right this is how it works this is how delete works now it's empty right no property now the main use of local storage was to even during refresh you can have that state persistent you can see those tasks if you remove this entire local storage you won't see anything it will be an empty slate yep so this was it this is how you can use uh, basic react app with uh, local storage you can also use a database but i'll show you this kind of database kind of stuff later in the later videos so this was our app and uh, this was our code the code will be available in the description and uh, do fork and check out the repo and uh, in the further videos will extend the idea of react how you can use the states and props and how you can do some http request within a component or a page and uh, we'll try to extend uh, and uh, get more hands-on with react so stay tuned for that and uh, how you can handle the front end with an api so i'll also show you how you can fetch the data from an api coming from a backend service to the front end so we'll render an entire page using that so stay tuned for those kind of videos and uh, yep and even uh, stay tuned for Python because uh, some interesting stuff will be coming soon. So Python and React are coming soon. So yeah, this was it for this video guys and uh, thanks for watching.